So I mentioned in a recent video that there are so many red flags and key considerations that you need to make when it comes to setting your goalkeepers up for success in FM24. And in this video, we have got 10 tips for you to help minimize mistakes when it comes to your men between the sticks. So sit back and enjoy. You're in safe hands. Oh, can't believe you've done this. Now the majority of tips in this video are of course going to revolve around conceding fewer goals, but we'll kick things off with a bonus tip answering the question on everyone's lips when it comes to goalies in this game. How the hell do I send my keeper up for corners? Well we all know by now that set pieces have been given a once over in FM24 and we've got set piece coaches to complement this shiny new feature. However, absolutely nowhere to be seen is a checkbox or otherwise any option to confirm that you'd like to send your keeper up in the final minutes if you need a goal. That is the sad truth of it I'm afraid to say, because we think we have turned over every stone in SI forums, on Reddit and in the game and its editor too, but there's nothing doing when it comes to triggering your Allisons or your Providels bagging that 95th minute winner. But that is all because your keepers aren't going to come up for a winner. It is actually with good authority that we believe a goalkeeper will only join the attack if the following clauses are true. Your team is losing in a 90 minute match or in a cup tie on aggregate by exactly one goal. You have very attacking as your mindset before the corner is won. You're past the 90th minute and we suspect that the final criteria is that your goalkeeper has a decent mentality behind him. We're talking work rate, determination, teamwork, etc. So there we have it. If you're wondering why it's only the AI sending keepers forward, it's more than probably because you are winning by exactly one goal and these other parameters are all in effect. OK, with that covered off, let's get into the 10 goalkeeping tips for conceding less, shall we? Number one is distribution awareness. If you're up against a much stronger, fitter or technically abled team, it is more than likely that the AI will have them high pressing you. And for this very reason, it's advised that you don't always distribute to centre backs and instruct your players to play out of defence in these circumstances. This tip is very simple, but trust me, this is effective in those giant killing attempts. Number two, and it's distribution awareness again. Seriously though, I know this sounds like I'm listing the rules for Fight Club. Fuck, I just mentioned Fight Club. But when it comes to goal kicks, poor distribution is genuinely the quickest and easiest way of creating a turnaround in FM. You're just giving the opponent the ball and saying, come at me bro. So if your keeper has poor passing or kicking as the attribute for goalies is listed, then you might want to consider using their throwing attribute instead and checking one of these top two boxes in the in transition tactic page. Tip number three is knowing what attributes matter most for top quality goalkeepers and we've covered this in spades in a few of our recent videos but aerial reach, reflexes and handling are your big three and if you're not sure which of those is making the biggest difference for your squad or if you're not sure which goalkeeper in your team is really the best option for first choice I would implore that you look all the way down here in your players profiles for the number of saves tipped, saves parried or saves held and compare those stats between your players to learn if your keepers are really getting high ratings for simple chances versus changing the game by blocking the more difficult shots instead. Tip number four is don't use sweeper keepers for the sake of it. If you are playing a very high line, you're running a high tempo tactic and your goalie's preferred position is SK, then by all means shoot your shot. But if the default tactic you've long since modified started with a sweeper keeper and you didn't really notice, then you might be causing all kinds of chaos by keeping this on. It is my humble opinion that the sweeper keeper role is the cause of the most glitchy mistakes when it comes to goalkeeper positioning in FM. They can be absolute clowns and you are often better off with a goalkeeper defence role to play it safe. Tip number five and on the topic of knowing what's causing mistakes, I'd ask you to look not only at what attributes make a good keeper good, but also which ones tend to lead to calamities. I'm talking tendency to rush out and tendency to punch, 
which I like to blend into one super attribute that I call tendency to piss me off. It's not always a bad thing to punch, for instance if you don't have a defender in front of your goalkeeper that can actually clear an aerial threat, this can be a lifesaver. But from my experiences, those punches always lead to sustained pressure and ultimately your side conceding. I'd much rather the keeper stayed put between the sticks or maybe actually caught the bloody ball. Tip number six goes without saying really, but you're going to need a proper goalkeeping unit in your team in FM24. Whereas in previous instances of this franchise, you might have gotten away with one solid goalkeeper and a reasonable backup, with injuries plaguing squads and now affecting goalies more than ever before, you need a good backup and a decent backup for that backup. My recommendation for the perfect second choice goalkeeper that you can pick up relatively cheaply and early on in FM24 is Inaki Pena. His attributes aren't amazing here, but this lad is more than happy to keep the bench warm and that's one less concern when it comes to dynamics and happiness. Tip number seven, and it's what to look out for on your scout and coaching reports that really make a goalkeeper tick, or not. Now obviously playing to that last tip, you don't want to see injury prone on any player in your squad really, it is a recipe for disaster in FM24. But above this, you're going to want these reports to feature consistent performer and relishes big matches if you are pushing for trophies. Tip number eight is to subscribe to FM Immortal. Sorry for the shameless plug, but some of these tips have kind of been doublers, let's be honest. We are less than a year old and very thankful to be growing and growing in number. We've actually got the biggest subscriber to view ratio of any Football Manager YouTube channel, and I think that's a good thing. But yeah, it's really the community, your comments and engagement when it comes to tips and questions that really spur us on. So a big thanks, I love you all. Tip number nine then is not to blame your goalkeepers for the unsavable goals. Now the game will lower the match rating of your goalkeepers as they concede, but the truth is not everything is blockable. And we've spoken about this before, but with the introduction of truer ball motion now a thing in FM24, deflected goals are a dime a dozen. These two for instance were in the very same match. So don't go dropping a goalkeeper for a poor rating if they cannot be blamed for the goals going in against them. Last but not least then, tip number 10 is sign the best goalkeeper in the world. Now this man genuinely carried us to our first three trophies in FM23 in our Valencia save and he's back with me again now that I've taken the helm at Marseille. Yes, we're talking about Alban Lafont. He's available early doors for between 10 to 15 million and still relatively young even though it feels like he's been around forever. He remains a solid investment at least until a goalkeeping wonder kid becomes available to you and what we love about him most is his ability to dominate the box, catching almost everything that comes his way and he's impenetrable during penalty shootouts. For goodness sake he's even saved a Harry Kane penalty in our Marseille save his only drawback is a slight fear of big matches, but that hasn't stopped him maintaining his place in our hearts. Alban, we thank you. Okay, did we miss anything? Do you know a secret way of sending your goalkeeper up for corners without swapping him for a striker in your tactics, of course? Or is there a hidden attribute that we should have talked about when covering goalkeepers? As always, we want to hear from you, so get your tips and takes down in those comments. That will wrap it for today's video though folks, hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you next time. Adios. Mm -hmm.